Hey, what's up, Muggles? This is Chris. We're here at the red carpet premiere for Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Hundreds of people have gathered here today to see Harry in his fifth movie adventure. So check it out. We're going to the premiere. And where did your uh, kind of love of Harry Potter begin? Well, I read the book uh, before it was published in 1997 and uh, my assistant had read it and thought that it was, told me it was about a young boy who goes to wizard school. I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, I took it home and couldn't stop reading it. I read it all in one night and I loved it. It made me laugh, it moved me. I'd been to a school like this, admittedly without magic. The characters were really relatable. I loved it. For me, the most important thing for this series was to grow it up a bit, make it feel a bit more intense, make it feel a bit more emotional, take a few dark turns with it and that's that's a David Yates Harry Potter rather than an Alfonso Cuarón Potter or a Mike Newell Potter. So it's a little bit more nuanced and um, and I think I think the audience are ready for that now. You know they've grown up with these characters, they've grown up with these kids, and they're ready for the for that world to be stretched a bit into darker areas. I think it's been quite a unique experience we've all sort of gone through because obviously I was just at, I was just how I, got, I was pretty lucky how I sort of got into it. I was just at normal school doing just doing regular stuff and uh, suddenly I was put into this crazy uh, environment so um, it's been it's been a really fun journey but um, I've really enjoyed it yeah I mean yeah it's just we've grown up so much as well because when you look back on the first ones we were just started when I was 11 so it's been a really long time but it's been been really fun. How closely did you work with JK Rowling in order to adapt this? Um, she was always there she was really supportive she was you know there from the beginning and always there if there were any questions or any uh, anything came up but she was also you know respectful and she you know she told us all when we first started she just wanted to see a great movie and that's what we set out to make with the book coming out do you guys get any kind of special privileges get any sneak peeks unfortunately no but um i think we get it sent on the night we don't have to go and queue up for it or anything we, we get it sent but we don't get it earlier than anyone else just because if you can imagine the security is insane so yeah no we can't but so what's your ritual then like when you when you get a new harry potter book Sorry? What's the ritual like when you get a new Harry Potter book? Do you think of it with you in mind? For like two days, literally. Like when I got the sixth one, I just read it nonstop, just like from back to front without doing anything else. So I'm pretty much attached to the book, so yeah. <laughs> it's rumored that in seven, uh, your character might die. How do you feel about that? Um, I think it'd be a, a fitting end. I don't know if he dies in some sort of heroic fashion. I don't think he will die, personally. I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, I think he'll live, I don't know, I have theories about who's good and who's bad and who's going to die, but they're probably all wrong. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty possible actually. I think Ron will survive, but I don't know about Hermione, but I just don't know. <laughs> How do you think the relationship between Ron and Hermione is going? I think, this is my personal opinion, that in the seventh one they'll get together. I think there's definitely some tension between them, some sexual tension, definitely. How much fun is it to play a, play a role that's this deliciously evil? What do you think? Very good. No, it's great. Great. It was, it was difficult. It's a difficult role. Um, and thank God I had David Yates there helping me along. But it was, you know, it was fantastic. Just describe a day on the set of uh, a movie this incredibly huge. Well, listen, for a start, the film is so well established. They know that everyone knows what they're doing. It's a long, hard day like any other film. But, I mean, the kids have to have three hours when they go into tutoring. And, you know, and I just go and have cappuccinos. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a long, hard day for everyone. And those kids have, you know, it's, I'm full of admiration how they've kept going for these. This is the fifth film, and their enthusiasm is still as strong as it was at the beginning. This is supposed to be the maturest uh, film to date. Have you, have you felt like a maturation process growing up in the public eye as well? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think I've matured in the same way that anybody who goes from, um, you know, 11 to, to almost 18 would grow. I don't think it's changed particularly uh, because of Harry Potter. Uh, maybe I've grown up a little bit faster because I spent so much time around adults from a younger age, but I don't really, I don't know if anything else is different. Is it comforting to know that there's now an end in sight? You've reached like more than half a waypoint? We've got a long way to go before the end. We've got two more movies to make, man. <laughs> <laughs>